Doctor, you talked about food a little bit, raw food, and how important that is. Um, I'm not sure what the percentages are, but most people have microwave ovens yeah. in their house and uh, cook a lot of food that way. What is that good? It's the best way. It's the best way to kill yourself really, really fast. You can even do a test: microwave water, let it mm -hmm. go cold, so you don't think the, the heat did it. And you have your flower pots. Two flower pots with the same flower, buy, bought at the same shop. And one you water with regular water, and the other you water with microwave water. The one you water with microwave water is dead in three to seven days. Dead, mm. not minusculely grown. No, no. It's done. Then the military started to, for uh, reasons to get food faster, warmed up for our military. They tried um, f microwave food. After mm -hmm. three days, they had to stop because everybody was throwing up, dizzy and nauseous. The microwave is basically destroying every food value that's in the food and turning it into a toxin. Mm -hmm. So everything out of the microwave is highly toxic. And the food value is completely zero. So it doesn't really matter if you have a bowl of, of vegetable soup that you warm up in the microwave mm -hmm. oven, or if you eat cardboard. It makes no difference. Because the food value is not there anymore, and it's, it also becomes toxic. And the microwave oven is, I mean, yeah, it's convenient. And I have to admit, sometimes if I'm on a run, I reheat my coffee in a microwave mm -hmm. oven, and I know it's bad. But we are just humans. And I still think, Scott, if we do 70% right, we can do 30% wrong without doing major harm for, to us. But we also need to really make sure that we are really uh, listening to our instinct. That's why my system is called the instinct-based medicine mm -hmm. system. Because I believe our instinct is always right. I believe our instinct is God talking to us, or our soul, or the universe, or nature, whatever you want to call this energy. It does not really matter. And when, when we start listening to our instincts, and we feel, I don't feel right. Y yeah, something is wrong. Just believe me. Mm -hmm. You have the feeling, I don't feel right. Something is wrong. And this is where we need to start listening again. So if something is wrong, start researching. What did I do? What did I eat yesterday? Might it be just something that upset my stomach yesterday? Don't I, should I just eat, you know, I don't even know really in Germany you have Zweiback. It's kind of like you, you give it to babies. It's this hard kind of like, like um, uh, very crispy kind of a bread. Mm. And uh, you have babies bite on it when they go teeth and stuff mm. like that. I don't really know the English word for it. But it's kind of like Melba toast. Okay. So you eat this for one day, and you find out, oh, do I get better? Do I feel better? Because it cleanses out your colon, you know, it helps mm -hmm. you, you have some, some fiber-rich food, whatever, and you just have a lot of water that day. And in 90% of the cases, that cures the problem. Mm -hmm. and, but always grabbing a pill because something is wrong just covers the symptom, and you will never find out the, the root cause mm -hmm. because... My instinct-based medicine system is only about the root cause. We do not treat disease. We do not treat illness. We do not treat the patient. We are just identifying the root cause and helping the person to eliminate the root cause. And the symptoms just fall off. Mm -hmm. But if you cover it with medication, let's say for spinal problems, you can have headaches. There can be, from your spine, a misalignment of your mm -hmm. spine. You can have eaten something really bad, yesterday, and the toxins that your colon is producing or digestive tract giving you the headache. You can have a lot of stress. You can get a headache from that. Your muscles might be tight and there's no oxygen in your, breath, in your brain. So there are hundreds of possible reasons for you to have a headache. So if you just take a headache pill and the pain goes away, at least you believe it's gone away. It's not really mm -hmm. gone away. You just believe it is. It just covers the... the the information flow. It breaks the information flow from your nervous system to your brain telling you there is pain. Mm -hmm. That's all it does. It doesn't get rid of the pain. But now you will never really research where did it come from? What food should I eat? What's, what food do I eat? Every single time I eat this, I get a stomach ache, or I get a headache, or I get dizzy. Mm -hmm. We never get there because the, the medication covers the symptoms. So we think we are cured. It's like people say, Cancer patients are in remission after treatment. No, they're not. 
they are dead to 90% and no body function is there any longer. So the cancer doesn't grow at the moment and the good stuff doesn't grow at the mm -hmm. moment. So there's no healthy cell replacement, but there is of course no, no replacement of or growth of the cancer cells because the treatment killed the entire body to a point where you barely survive. That's why it says on the chemotherapy side effects, death as a side effect. Mm. So that's so many people die because they miss the spot where they kill the patient to a point where they're still staying alive. Mm -hmm. And the, the microwave oven actually is one of the tools making us full, feel full, making us feel we ate, but an hour later we are hungry again because we did not get nutrition. We mm -hmm. stuffed our stomach and now we are creating possibly uh, diabetes because our pancreas has to produce all these digestive enzymes now for us to be able to digest the dead food because now there are no living enzymes mm -hmm. in the food any longer. Even you have the, the vegetable soup you just put into the microwave oven. And that's one of the main reasons also for diabetes. So the microwave oven could be one of the main reasons for diabetes because mm -hmm. we cannot digest what we eat. Mm -hmm. And I mean, eventually the body gets rid of it, but it's a huge effort for the body to get rid of microwave food. So basically, Scott, the microwave oven is not something we should use. I mean, in an emergency situation, once in a while, I don't really think it does a big harm to mm -hmm. us. But if I would not feel right, I would not do one single thing wrong. I would be fanatic about drinking a gallon of water a day with half a teaspoon of pink salt in it. I would be fanatic in a raw food diet. I would juice like crazy. You know, and, and people don't understand you can really detoxify your system with apple, carrot, celery juice in the morning, freshly made, of course, one third each. If you're really highly toxic, you really get diarrhea. And people think it's a bad thing. No, it's not. You are so toxic that the body is using the first opportunity to get rid of the toxins in an instant. It's just flushing you out. Mm -hmm. So it just tells you how toxic you are. And that's got is something that is really unbelievably uh, phenomenal that you can ruin your body for 30, 40 years. And you do for a couple of weeks the right thing and we are healthy again. This is so phenomenal. Yeah. My message of hope, you know, people say, you give people hope. Yeah, I give people hope because I know, I have seen it happen. I have seen people coming into my office saying, I have three months to live, six months to live, nine months to live. My own mother had six months to live with hepatitis C, uh, liver cirrhosis, and liver cancer in a terminal state. Six months to live, 42 years ago. And as you know, my mom is still alive mm -hmm. today and the healthiest person in the world. And I can tell you that because I've seen it. The most important part is, you, you need to talk to people that are producing results or produced results on a consistent basis. Never talk to somebody like, like, like an economy professor that never made a million in his life teaching you in university how to be rich. That's absurd. You know, I spent more money in, in a year in restaurant tips than they make. So this guy wants to tell me how to make money? No. I made the money before from coming from starvation, from coming from a family, from refugees after the Second World War. And I knew what it means to have nothing to eat because there were days where we had nothing to eat. So I made my success. I made my money. I wrote 19 best-selling books. If you want to write a best-selling book, talk to me. I wrote 19 of these. I, I have worked with over 66,000 patients. If you want to know how to work with patients, ask me. So the, the point is... Talk to people who did it. Talk to a patient who was sick and got healthy. Talk to somebody that weighed 400 pounds and now is slim and skinny and mm -hmm. fit and healthy and strong. That's a person you talk to. Not a doctor whose lifespan statistically is the shortest of all professions. The doctor has a lifespan, an average of 56 years of age, the highest abuse rate of alcohol, the highest abuse rate of drugs, and the highest rate of suicide. This is a person you want to ask how to be fit healthy and strong for the next 140 years? No. You ask somebody who is doing it. Mm -hmm. You go to somebody that's 100 years old and plays soccer with his great-great-grandchildren and you say, how in the world did you do that? And that makes a difference. So we need to talk to people 
They have done it before and they are producing results. And to conclude this, stay away from the microwave oven. And if you have children, throw the microwave oven out of the window because they are microwaving everything and they are killing themselves. Mm -hmm.